I am Bill Cartwright with Living Right with Bill Cartwright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cartwright. And this week, David is on the road, so the Super Millennial's not with me, and I'm doing solo episodes. So this week, our topic is transition, and today's Connection Thursday, and I know it's Friday as you listen to this, (laughs) and what happened is, I actually forgot to record the episode, and I was working on several projects, and all of a sudden, it's eight o'clock at night and I realized I hadn't done the episode. So what we did, called David, and of course David fixes it as usual, he put a throwback episode in yesterday and instead of our book study today, which will continue next week, we are gonna do our connection Thursday on a Friday. And we're gonna be discussing transitioning consciousness. So as we stated this week, Transition is defined as the process or a period of changing from one state to another. Our state is our energy. Understand our energy is dictated by our source. Our source is determined by our thoughts we hold in mind. Our thoughts are set by the programs that are in the subconscious mind. And all of this comes together to determine our consciousness. So let's say something upsets your environment. This activated an anger program. This program is activated in the head. The head brain sends the communication to the heart brain. The heart brain sends a confirming signal back to the head brain, and this sets the stress loop. Once this is set, you now feel angry. And you feel angry as the emotion rises And then as the emotion rises and increases, it's the ego taking over conscious mind control. And the ego begins to create a construct. And he does this or she does this through stories. And these stories are built around the anger program, which is the program activated. Now, these stories that the ego is bringing into your consciousness are rooted in your history of the past or your worrisome uh, your worrisome burden of the future. Now this process is going on. This is a survival process and it's this survival process that sets your aim. Your aim is your physiology. And when we're in a negative state, our physiology is set in restriction and resistance. And it's our aim of physiology that sets our focus. And our focus when we're in a negative state is fear. And our behavior follows our focus. And if our focus is in fear, our behavior is reactive. So what actions do you take? Your actions are embedded in anger. So in this state, if you're having this scenario in this state, your consciousness is in that moment anger. And this is what sets your energy and source. And there's a very important understanding that nothing can rise higher than its source. So when we talk about transitioning our consciousness, this is a process that is rooted in the releasing of the programs that we carry in the subconscious mind. This is the releasing of the history. And it's releasing this history And it's this history that causes our disruptions in focus. In other words, when we are conscious, our aim is in an explore, an expansive state energy. And your focus is in growth and your behavior is responsive. But when your consciousness is in a negative state, and this is always rooted to our history, This causes a disruption in our natural focus of growth. And it's what puts us in a reactive, resistant state, source, energy. Our focus is in fear, which means it can link to any of the red zone energies. 
and your behavior is always reactive. So we, people are looking for peace in their life. People are looking to find peace. And the challenge that we have as we're looking for peace is we're always looking for peace outside ourselves. We look for it from our next success. We look for it from the next guru. We look for it from the next program, the next coach. We're always looking for peace outside ourselves. Once we do this, we will have this and we can be in peace. And the challenge is we cannot transition our consciousness and find peace from anything outside ourselves. And so your challenge in transitioning consciousness is we have to get rid of, we have to release the programs that pull us into negative states. These are what cause us to become activated and lose our consciousness. Now, it's important. These programs are your identity. These are your history. And this is going to be a statement that may rattle a few of your cages. These programs cannot be prayed away. They must be faced head on. So let's take a look at consciousness. The definition of consciousness is the state of being awake and aware of one's surroundings. This is step seven of stress mastery called finding the now. So let's go back to the anger program being activated. The stress loop has been set. You feel angry. Your aim is resistance and restrictive. Your focus is fear and your behavior is reactive and determined always by who is controlling that conscious mind. So when you're in this state, your behavior is not being controlled by you. You're reacting. The ego is controlling your behavior. So let's say this has happened and you're in this stress loop, but let's say you see the ego and observe the thoughts. What happens when this process begins? You begin to move your attention to the heart. And now what happens is you feel the anger. But you're feeling the anger. The anger program is still activated, but your focus is now on the heart and you're using the let go technique. You ask the question, can I allow this? And it causes you to pause plan. What is happening physically when you do that is you're switching that nervous system over by activating the vagus nerve, taking a breath, answering the question, can I allow this? You turn the nervous system from red zone to green zone. And when you ask the question, would I, or, or I'm sorry, could I let this go? You are now bringing your consciousness, your energy, your source up to 250 neutrality. And the question you're asking here is, can I be flexible in what I'm feeling and what I'm seeing? And when you can say yes, you raise your consciousness up and you ask the next question, would I let this go? And it really is, am I willing to let my history fall and make this just a blank page and start another chapter? This is the willingness energy, 310 energy. You are again raising your consciousness in your source. And then when you answer the question, when? And you answer this question, when will I let this go? And you come into acceptance and you say, now you become surrendered. And this changes your source to the high energy of 400 reason where you're embracing the situation. You are still feeling anger. It's still in your body. The difference is you are conscious. You are in a state of observing the activated program. In this state, you change the entire physiology, which means you change the aim. The aim becomes to expand and explore. Now the focus is growth. So your behavior, your focus drives the behavior is now responsive. You have the ability, this transition, this is a transitioning into a higher consciousness. You now have the ability to respond to the situation. That response may be, may be, this isn't worth it. That response may be for you to state your case. Either way, you are coming out of a higher consciousness. 
Now this transition into a higher consciousness and these processes that we are teaching you in stress mastery accomplish two important things. One, it gives you respond ability. It gives you the ability to respond to the situation and have your aim in an expansive, expansive physiology and have your focus and growth. Now you're not reacting to the situation. You're responding. You're connected. And number two, one, another important thing accomplished here is every time you do this, you are actually disarming and releasing the program that caused the upset. So the program that caused you to get angry does not come from what happened in the environment. It's coming what's happening inside you and your subconscious mind. This program, you were not born with it. And this program, once released, that means the same situation come into your environment and you will not get upset. So in Stress Mastery, I talked about these on Wednesday, there are three levels. And these levels each have a distinct purpose. The first level is to give you the focus, to give you the techniques, to give you the practices, to give you the knowledge of what it takes to accomplish in that scenario I just went through. And as you put these practices into your life, as you begin to create these new habits, you begin to take focus back. And focus brings back your consciousness. We are always in focus. It's The question is, what consciousness are we in focus in? Fear or growth? So this is what it does. This is, this is the key, what happens in, in these levels is that first one is to give you a state. Now, what's the purpose of level one is to start to begin to raise your state of consciousness, but you cannot raise your state of consciousness until you understand how to take back your focus, how to reset your aim. And so our state is linked to our physiology, which is linked to our mind which is linked to our programs, which determines our focus. So in level one of stress mastery, it's all about breaking the illusion and setting our focus. Now, once you have this in place, now it's time for level two of stress mastery. And what is level two all about? It's about releasing those programs. These programs that were set in that stage one of development, when we talk about what Dr. Keegan was teaching us, that stage one of development, tribalization, then in stage two, the impulsive mind, those programs were solidified. And in stage three, the socialized mind, you are now that identity. You believe that's you. Well, stay, level two of stress mastery is about releasing those programs that disrupt your focus. And this is an important, this is going into stage, you know, in, into the stage four self-authoring mind that we talked about on Wednesday, but it's being in that stage. It's not going stage four back to stage three, stage four back to stage three. That's not it. So level two in stress mastery is releasing these programs that are causing our disrupt of our focus. And then level three, this is what most people think of consciousness. Level three is becoming the focus. It is the level that when people talk about consciousness, this is the level they're thinking about. These are the level that some of the great masters talked about. And the challenge we all have is, as I said earlier, we cannot pray ourselves to this level. As we spoke on Wednesday, to get to this level, we must travel through the stages of development that Dr. Keegan and Dr. Lehe laid out. And that first stage is a stage that happens that you don't have control. The impulsive mind is the tribalization process. And this is our survival process because this stage is going to take you into stage two called the imperial mind. And then really what stage two is about, it's about solidifying the programs you, re you receive from your tribe in stage one. But stage three, socialized mind. This cannot be prevented, but stage three is when you are fitting into the culture and the tribe and your belief systems are linked to the belief systems of the tribe. This is our survival process. Understand, we cannot change this. But to enter stage four, the self-authoring mind, is 
a conscious choice. You will, or I, I should say, you must begin to question everything. You will have to change your current actions. You will be rattled and disrupted as you begin to make these changes. And for us to remain in stage four, the self-authoring mind, we will have to master level two of stress mastery. We have to. You, you cannot get into an interconnected mind, into these higher states of consciousness. You have to go through these processes and these stages. You can't go from stage three to stage five. And this is when. You hit stage five, you basically have taken over conscious mind control from the ego. Now, the key here is to remain in stage four. Because stage four, the self-authoring mind, when we first enter that, you will be shooken. Is that a word? I don't have David here to create me. Shaken? You will be disturbed. Okay? So as you enter stage four, the key here is being able to keep and create new habits. This means you will have to care for the body, you'll have to work on mastering the mind, and this is when you have to create that connection of head, heart, and hand and nurture the soul. Well, this process is transitioning consciousness from the ego, the identity, who, who the ego and the identity to the consciousness of you, who you are, the spirit, the higher self, you. Now, researchers show only 1% ever reach that interconnected, interconnected mind stage five. What we're talking about when we control consciousness, only 1%. And what happens is this percentage is so small because here's the reason. People have not been given the roadmap to complete their journey. And this is what I am attempting to do with the programs the teachings of stress mastery. So understand, when a decision is made to find God or to find consciousness, you begin a journey that takes you out of the known into the discovery of knowing. And on this journey, there are ups and downs. But it is important to understand that the ups are not always up and the downs are not always down. It's all a practice to become conscious and to find the now and to master focus. This journey is best set without expectations. Do not expect miracles. The key is to find the now and just be in with what is happening the best that you can. Transitioning consciousness, you will experience many small deaths. Understand that. This is why people get so disturbed. As you let go of the identity, as you release the belief systems, and you let go of that deity, and for those who desire to really to know God, they're going to have to release this identity of who they believe they are, the ego. And to know God, you will have to walk alone into an uncertain future. And as one leaves stage three, the socialized mind is stage four, the self-authoring mind, fears will rise up. The ego's going to fight, yet you will have to walk through this in order to progress. So learning to make the let go technique that we just talked about, step four, stress mastery, a habit, is the most important thing. It's about learning to let go and transition yourself into higher consciousness. With letting go comes a new freedom. This new freedom is you with conscious mind control. This new freedom disables the ego and its ability to take over and control the conscious mind. The belief systems, the identity that you've carried for so many years is let go. And this is what it means to be born again. You see a new world. You see through the eyes of a child. You see through the brain frequency, which is theta, of a child. 
And transitioning consciousness is letting go of the need of the want to belong. You understand? This need or want to belong creates separateness. And no longer, if you progress through this journey and you are going to find consciousness, you no longer will you see separateness. When you see another, you will not see them as separate or less than yourself. You are seen through the eyes of the ego and your focus is fear and your behavior is reaction. Anytime you are seeing someone as separate, you are seeing others through your fear. And fear is always blind. Transitioning consciousness is knowing that no one is less worthy than you, even if the person's behavior towards you is not kind in nature. When your consciousness rises, you know that the person who attacks you in words and in character are seeing and perceiving their lives through the perception of fear. Their focus is fear. Therefore, their behavior is in reaction. And most of the population is stuck in stage three socialized mind. And this means their focus is fear. And they react to the world through their perception of how the world should be. Now, when you start your personal transition, your journey toward consciousness, you will begin to see many people who are afraid and acting out and angry. And they're acting out in angry ways. But in fact, you might be sleeping with one of these people. In fact, these people acting in angry ways, you might be living with one of these people. You might be best friends with one of these people. You might be the son or a daughter of one of these people. And you have to understand you are stepping outside the tribe. When you go from stage three to stage four, you are leaving the socialized mind in a tribe. And that tribe is wired never to change. Our ancestors didn't have a stage four. They survived by staying in stage three. So, so if you think that changing that is going to be as easy as I'm going to set my New Year's resolution, you better think again. We are living in a world where people are angry. Because the world, they're angry, understand it, the world does not match their, to their perception of how it should be. That's what it happens. Their expectation of how things should be does not match their perception of what they see in the world, so they're angry. A perception that stems from the stage one, impulsive mind, the tribalization programming, which set the identity in stage two, the imperial mind, which solidified that identity through experiences. And then the identity becomes the person in stage three socialized mind, and they become the identity. So people will cut you off in traffic. They're going to call you names, bump into you on the sidewalk, judge your actions and looks. People threaten you on Facebook, spread untrue rumors about you. All of this is about maintaining a stage three socialized mind. And if you are ready to make a real decision to step out of all of this, and this is the only way you're going to find peace, you may actually be the target of those people in stage three. Because as you step out, you, through your new actions, are actually triggering them. So you're triggering those around you with anger, fear, and guilt. And that will be their weapons of choice to bring you back into stage three and bring you back into the tribe where you'll be safe. The definition of transition is the period of changing from one state of consciousness to another. This means going from stage three to stage four to stage five. Now, a study was done at the University of Scranton and it showed that 92% of people who set goals or who decide to make that change from stage three to stage four will fail. So I asked the question this, what about the 8% that succeeded? What were some of the things that they did? Because we always look at all the negative, but what about the positive? 
I say, well, 8% succeeded. That means 8% of the people have moved out of stage three into stage four. And if they could be in stage four, guess what? There's an opportunity to get to stage five. There's an opportunity to get to stage five. So what were five things that these guys did that were interesting and and, and, and I know that these five things work because it's what we teach also. Number one, they begin with the end in mind. In other words, these people that, that succeeded with their goals understood higher goal setting and they set identity-based goals. They knew what it looked like at the end of the journey. Exactly. That was number one. Number two, they built a support system. If you don't have a support system around you, if you decide, if you're, you're listening to this episode and you say, I'm ready, I'm going to make the decision, I am going to make change in my life, I'm going to step out of stage three into stage four, and you make that decision, you're going to transition your life, you better understand that everybody around you is against you unconsciously. You are going against DNA and programming and survival processes that were in place for over 160,000 years. It's only been 10,000 years since we see the life we see today. 160,000 years, there was no stage four. And so that's why we're so embedded in the illusion of stress. You're going to have to have a support system. And I, have, I recommend the community that we have, Stress Mastery Community, but again, that's for you to come and to explore. Number three, these people that achieved their goals, they got clarity of what they wanted. They were specific. So we usually do this, number three is usually number one, number one is number three. In other words, if you're going to go into higher goal setting, you have to know what you want, really know what you want, in clarity, in really detail. And you gotta create that plan, and you gotta set that goal. And then you gotta take that Put it in the heart and go to the end. That's what higher goal setting is. You've got to make that an identity-based goal. But they got clarity. So look at what they've done. They, they begin with the end in mind. They built a support system. They got clarity specific what they wanted. And number four, they built awareness. What is awareness? They recognized when they were in procrastination. In other words, step three of stress mastery is name the ego. Why do we do that? So you can recognize when the ego's telling you, we'll do it tomorrow. Let's not do this right now. We're too tired. And that's when people deviate from their plan. Well, these individuals, the 8% that succeeded to get into stage four, they built awareness. They could recognize when they were procrastinating. And number five, which is huge, I think, is they use systems to work. They use a timer. They use the Pomodoro system, a 5217 work system. They work within a system. What happens when we work within a system? We work within the green zone. They worked with music, listening to music and frequencies, or they worked with setting their brains in certain ways. I'll talk about that in future episodes because it is powerful. That's part of what we call green focus management. And one big thing, why they use systems to work, they made it very clear. They did not multitask. You never achieve your goals if you multitask because it's impossible to multitask. You can only focus on one thing. And when you are focused on one thing, your physiology, your aim is in expansive and explore. And when you focus on one thing, your focus is in growth and your behavior is responsive to that task. When you try to focus on more, you create chaos and put your focus in, you know, into a fear state and you're being reactive. You're trying to do everything. You got to do one thing. So they were right. So to close this week, this week on transition, we must understand this is the key to transitioning anything. We have to understand how we're built for survival. And we have to understand these processes we've talked about. We must understand focus. We must always understand that we are focused. There is no such thing as not being focused. You're focused. It's whether it's where your consciousness and your state is. You're always focused. You might be focused in fear. You might be focused in growth, but you're always focused. And we must understand the tribe, how the tribe works, and these stages that Dr. Kagan and Dr. Leahy discovered over, over decades of research. These stages are important because 
If we understand the tribe, and for 160,000 years, our survival was dependent on a socialized mind and being in stage three, and that it's unnatural for us to move to stage four, and we can understand that we're going to be uncomfortable and expect it, then you could start to really have a chance to grow. And we must make a solid decision to change. And this solid decision, when we talk about going into level one of stress mastery is making a decision. These are, again, the 10 points in level one. One, discover your purpose. Two, the proper diet and exercise for your physiology. Three, name the ego, create awareness. Four, learn that let go technique. Five, set the day with that green focus power hour. Six, close that day to transition your roles. Seven, get the knowledge that we just talked about in this episode. Eight, set higher goals using the processes of setting that identity-based goal. Nine, build a support system. And here's number 10. Never, ever quit. Once you step into it, stay in it, you will fall, get back up, but never, never quit. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, and subscribe. Links are right below the show. If you're interested in exploring the Stress Mastery community where you can get all of this, everything for level one is in the community to get you out of stage three to stage four, go to stressmasterycommunity.com. Come in. As I said earlier this week, they will ask for a credit card, but you have no obligation. And we will make sure that we notify you when those 30 days are up. You have 30 days free in there. We cannot change our platform. Don't be intimidated by that. We guarantee it. If something should happen and charge your credit card, we control the processes. You just contact us and I promise that I will fix that. Until next time, stay inspired.